Okay, we're gonna be here at day two in the uh, middle of August 2020, fixing this Kia Sophia year 2000. I guess the same as the Spectre in this era. You notice these two screws here? When you get the tire off, you have to take these screws off because they are a preventator from this to come off. I don't know why it ever would, but it holds your drum on to the spindle. These things usually hold them on, but I guess they think they need double security. See these two screws here? That's so you can pull this drum off with, not probably not with these screws, we'll see that real quick. Because you have to have multiple hands to do everything with this car. So we get one of these screws off. We'll pretend that it, it's gonna work with this one. And there's one here, I loosened it up, so it's a little easier to get off. But if you're in the field and you wanna fix your car, you have to have a fat screwdriver. Anyhow, once you get the screw out of there, and it's a 10 millimeter, I guess it's a 25 pitch, it's the fatter one of the two, it's not the fine. You put it in this other hole, and it bottoms against the spittle. So that way, as it goes in further and further, it's supposedly gonna push your drum off. If your drum was like mine, you can beat on it all day long, it ain't gonna move. So I had to go and buy two other screws that had heads on them so I could actually use a ratchet because these were not easy to turn off. So if I take them out, this is just one of the many wonders of this car. They figure, well, you can use these screws. They're here, right? You just use a screwdriver. Well, if the thing won't come off with a hammer, these things are not going to likely have enough torque with, you, with your hand and a screwdriver. And also holding a camera with one hand and doing this is such crap. Anyhow, here we go. So we got this thing in. Now, of course, we got leverage. Turn a couple turns. Turn a couple turns. And you'll notice that you'll see there's a gap between the, the uh, old screw hole and the spindle. If it gets wider, it means it's working. And that means these two screws are actually able to work on this side. Whereas on your car, it might take the ones with a hex head. Ah, so it worked. So now easily, I am going to take off the screws and also the, uh, uh, the drum. And I'll talk about what's the problem inside next, which is the way they adjust their brakes and how you have to take them off. Okay, so here we are. And there it is, the infamous system that Kia uses to adjust a brake. That's the brake master cylinder. Not matter, well, I guess it's a cylinder, master cylinder, hydraulic cylinder. This little thing here obviously puts the pressure in from hydraulics. And this long little bar here, this is the adjusting cam right here, that thing going across. And you'll notice that this is coming out, in fact, from a head. You notice the distance is roughly, what, an eighth of an inch of clearance between the nut, the lug butt, and the end of the cam. That shows you that the adjustment is pretty much further out right now. Now the shoe wear on this is down to maybe, where are you shoe? These phones are so hard to point where you want them. Okay, so the shoe is basically, come on, Focus, focus. It's maybe only a little over a sixteenth. So I haven't torn up the car yet. But up here it's, you know, it's a little bit wider. Not quite an eighth, but just about an eighth. So it has wear and tear. It's easy to move and check. These replacement uh, shoes I've got, give you an idea. There's a replacement shoe meet. And they're only like 18 or 19 bucks at Pep Boys. AutoZone, whoever carries the things. But obviously you don't want to get them down to the end where the bottom's worn out. So now, this is the offending part. So if I go and I, I click this thing, oh, I better turn it into maybe use, what the hell, I got some broken shoe off. Oh, the other one basically even broke, the shoe came off when the shoe fell down on the ground. That's not a good point. 
Do I prove that? No, I don't prove that. So where did this shoe come from? Oh, in here. Good. This is a shoe that's on the card. It just opened up and fell off. So that's good to know. It means it's time to change my brakes, definitely. God, what a joke. And of course, the first thing you really do is you take off these two retainers. You can take off this spring, take off that spring on the bottom, which is the same thing. You can either use, obviously, wire nose pliers, pinch pliers, whatever, but just take those two off and you basically relieve most of the pressure. Then you can take off the two retainers, slip these out, make sure you take a picture like I've done to you know exactly what spring goes where. The little thing there goes at the end. The big one obviously faces one way, goes in, faces the other. And way back there, you'll notice the other spring. That's for the rear of this cam thing we're yelling about. That has a tensioner back there. And I don't know how the thing really, really works, but I'm kind of tired and burnt out to figure out the science. See this little shoe here that has a clip? That will have to be taken off in order to replace your brake. And this side doesn't have one because this is the side that they actually is working off the emergency brake and that's like a pivot, an axle. So when you pull the brake, that has to stay put and this long arm down below, it gets pulled with a cable and then that expands the brakes. So we're gonna take a stop here. Let me see if I can find anything that would actually move this, this thing in. That's too flimsy, that's just a brake. I'll switch the screwdriver over. All right, let's see if this will work. Well, that's not easy. Or is it over here? One of these places, and actually, they don't really tell you how you can adjust this thing, but somewhere along here, you push on the right thing, and it produces some slack, and it shoves that thing back. Oh, let me see again. This is crazy. Sorry guys, but I'm sorry I'm working with one hand like a stupid cameraman I am at somebody else's house. Here's a big screwdriver. Put it here. You notice it, you notice it goes up and down. So it's not like locked solid. And, yep, popped all the way back. You notice that? Now it's all the way back. So that gives me all the slack I need to adjust this thing. And I don't know why going back would make it looser, but it does somehow. Then when you get the brakes on, uh, I guess by putting the brakes in reverse and stopping the car a couple of times, going backwards, that might bring this thing back out to where it once was. But all I know is it goes back and this spring obviously loses a lot of tension. All right, so... I'll talk to you guys later, uh, and I'll, maybe somebody else is going to post this thing and explain more details, but I have looked and looked on YouTube, and nobody seems to really put a post up, and they talk about all their kinds of lame, useless information for us lame Kia owners of this specific model, 2000, maybe 99, I don't know, but mine's a 2000.